This is the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. It is March, Tuesday, March 8th, 2016, and it's about 7.15. The Board of Appeals will conduct this meeting according to rules laid out in Chapter 48 of the General Laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Robert Rules of Order, and its own particular set of rules entitled Rules of Procedure, a copy of which is on file with the town clerk. Another copy is available from the clerk at this meeting. This meeting is being tape recorded for the purpose of taking minutes. Once the minutes are approved, the tape may be taped over. Okay. So, uh, new business? Yep. You want to do your monthly finance update? Yes. Um, that first page I just um, stuck in there um, some items to approve the next month's meeting. So if you want to just see how we do tonight and then. Okay. Just look up at the end. Okay. So, revolving account. By the way, Gina and Gina, myself, and Sean met with the Finance and Advisory Board um, Saturday the 27th, presented our budget. Um, we gave them an update on, um, if you look at the second page of the revolving account, when we submitted the budget back in December, I think it was, I think it was 76 hours. So from December 1st till the end of um, February, it was one, 133.5. So we gave them that update. Um, the expense, what's next? So when you look at under supplies, that we have $16.62 left in expenses. So anything in the, the to the left, the 190 where it says <laughs> remaining. Next sheet. Oops, you lost the sheet. Is it? Something just slipped right out to your, to your right. It's right there anyway, yeah. Oh, yeah, but remaining's right there. It's, no, she's on the right page. Okay. Um, where it says remaining, 192.52, <laughs> that's for the telephone. So that I have to say because the telephone usually comes up to about 387 so if you look on top I got 400 so technically that has to be saved the phone so we have 1662 so um, when you look at the warrant we have I do need to order other stuff of course before the fiscal year ends June 30 so what happens with that for you guys um, it will come out of revolving once we use the 860 in expense. It just doesn't cover everything. Um, I've always wondered about the phone. I have a silly question. I'm mm -hmm. just my own being curious. So is it the town of Georgetown that has like w one phone system and the bill's paid by the town or, or it comes paid. out of uh, uh, the ZBA's, your landline comes out of the ZBA's budget? They use Verizon. Yeah. Everybody has a line item, and I get that phone bill. They're always behind. If you look at the expense sheet, like we just got um, January's. Gotcha. Um, on March second. Okay. So I won't get February's. So you know it, it's always behind, and then when the June phone bill comes in, that always has to be, you know, encumbered or, or. Is that the your line? Is that what they do? I think that was the question. Is how they allocate the, yeah, alloc yeah. Yeah, the, that, the total bill by line? These are the line. totals for our line. So how many calls came in, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, on that line? Yeah. Yeah, they can look up, you know, what calls went out, what calls come in, all of that. And so sometimes we have long distance and sometimes we don't. I try not to call back on that. You know, I've been, got some calls from New York, and sometimes I kind of wait for them to call back. But <laughs> if it's important, I'll just call. Okay. Uh, the warrant is for the office phone. Um, went, so I spoke to Gina, and so I just need a motion. Um, if you look at the attached, get to it. On the warrants. Okay. The department has to pay for their own. So. Phone. Yeah, we pay for our own phone. Well, for the did, actual. We, did, we got a new comu desktop a, computer. Uh huh. That came out of the the four computer had four computers to. So we did get that. 
And last time in 2000. I'm just surprised that each department. In 2007, we purchased our own desktop computer. Mm -hmm. so. Um, so I looked on Staples, WV, everywhere we order from in the office, and I couldn't find a mm -hmm. single phone. Just one without all these handsets and and. I, I can't. Well, more than fine. they were. They were just too expensive so I'm like I'm just gonna go to Best Buy because we used to do this you can use the Staples cards oh, but I found the best deal at Best Buy so I just bought it myself and you put in for reimbursement I mean we don't do it all the time but in cases like these so you need a motion to approve that huh you need a motion we need a motion so moved all right make the motion the amount and the account and what it's for <laughs> I think, right? Yeah, yeah. Motion to reimburse. Yep, motion to reimburse the uh, $57.99 expense for the Panasonic KX TG phone. From I'll, sec I'll second that. That's close enough. From account? From the revolving account? Nope. One, it's one one expense account. Oh, yeah, one one expense account. account. Yeah. I'll second that. <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Went with the KX TG 6591T. I would have gone with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's just me. You should have brought your non-exempt -ex status so you'd have to pay the tax, which we can't leave the issue to the, other, the last phone was like a $14 phone, yeah. and the buttons just weren't working. Couldn't work for a week and died. <laughs> I just find it horribly inefficient. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Motion for um, the reason the, I have these separated out is because we had certain people at, at business, we had certain people in industrial, and we had certain people at profit. So we there are motion. I'm looking for the sheets after the expenses, right? What are you looking for? General point. The, the motion go to by the first page. Oh, we'll go put it back here. So everything Got but it. industrial. Sorry, no, we're we're going to delay, right? Going in order. In my loan apps. Yeah. They're dual-sided, so it could um, pass on back. All side? I think everyone's side. Yep. I'll make a motion to approve the business minutes. These are emailed <coughs> on 2 17 16. Or what was the date? <coughs> oh, that was was that the date? February 2nd. Yeah. Uh, Okay, yeah, the business meetings of a meeting minutes of February 2nd, 2016. That will be mailed on 217. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I abstain. I abstain. Can it pass with three? Yep, I actually talked to Council today about the other ones. Okay. I didn't know for Dave, and he said, no, we can okay. do, as long as the three were <clears throat> present, we can do three. Motion carries. Uh, I'll also make a motion to approve the hearing minutes for 36 Prospect Street for February 2nd. Second. That would be Gina, Jeff, and Sharon. Yep, I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. I abstain. Dave and Sean abstain. Motion carries. And on the minutes for Industrial Way, I'm not comfortable moving on that yet. Can we so we'll put those in the next agenda? Yep. yep. So those will go on April 5th. Okay. Okay. okay um, so is the economic, economic development, development committee, I sent Jim Lacey a, an agenda last week. I don't know, maybe they just, maybe it slipped their mind or they couldn't make it. I didn't hear from anybody either, so. Okay. Um, uh, general correspondence. I got a notice of intent for 48 Sorrel Street um, from administration. I can't put my page. I need a rubber thing. Uh, this is to construct a garage, ad a garage addition and a shed and a buffer zone. So it's a five acre lot. Um, I just kind of try to copy what I could copy, but I checked it out with Steve and it's, it's um, the setbacks are fine. As far as what they're doing, 13 Meadowbrook 
screen. We got a notice of intent. Um, second page, it says buffer zone is addition to the existing single family dwelling. Um, this, um, I just use the scale ruler and I just let Steve know that they need to stay 20 feet from the side in the Abbey zone. What are they building? Oh, de oh patio and deck. So the building inspector would get that anyway. Right? Yeah. yeah, it's just, he said, when I get the notice of intent, I just right. give him the comments. Okay. Um, under other, can we um, approve this for April 5th for business? These items. Um, uh, well, why don't we wait, because I don't know if we're going to get into fees or not, if you're going to have time to get into fees. I mean, should we just move that? We can, to you can put it on and maybe skip over it. Okay, That's and then we've got less, less coming in to meet you guys. Yeah, I mean, we've gone through these fees before. We just have to decide whether we want to raise them. At the, at the, the meeting that we attended on... I forget what date that was, but Saturday, there was some questions from the committee on whether our fees were high enough. Um, I think we all realize that the fees aren't going to cover the, the, you know, the difference in her pay. But I said we would look at the fees to make sure that we're, they're reasonable and if we can up them a little bit because we haven't upped them in a long time. So maybe we can up them a little bit. Um, we have the right to increase them as necessary so that's why this is on here where's the document with our fees it's in the book the rules right? of procedure oh, the rules of procedure that were emailed okay we have are you looking for what we ours have are? increased yeah, some yeah. of them actually but not we over, did. over time we've increased certain here's the but um, not the, recently yeah. here here's the yeah, two years ago we did. everybody take a yeah, just pass but them. we pass can them down put that with your feet i just realized I didn't print out the fee on These the are last page of fees. the application with what our fees are. <laughs> yeah, that's what so. so we haven't amended any of these since From 2009. 2009. And we did the, um, it was the wireless, it was the cell cell tower, wireless antenna. Wow. Yeah, oh. so we can, I feel like that's <laughs> why I'm, yesterday. That's why I'm saying I think we can probably <laughs> increase them a little bit. Um, it's also probably prudent to mention that North Andover, Amesbury, and Newburyport probably have substantial um, applications in comparison to... I checked out West Newbury and they were right. They were actually low. Newburyport. Newburyport's low. They're low. Really? Yeah, I got it right here. Well, it's right in front. And I attached the... No, but um, uh, the right. number of applications. Oh. Yeah, that's probably higher, so... Right, yeah. so they can keep they their revenue lower to yeah. make... I'm sorry. No, no. My bad on the. Uh, I mean, the, the thing there. to keep in mind, well, we'll talk about this, I guess, the next meeting more, too, is that, you know, these are here to cover the variable costs, not her, you know, Patty's fixed costs. So when you look at the budget, the fixed costs should be covered, mm -hmm. or, you know, she shouldn't be exceeding, um, you know, the budget for the fixed costs with any of the fees, with or without a hearing. In my opinion, this is all variable cost, so this should reflect the true additional cost to administer a hearing associated with any of these. Yep. Know, they're way out of whack. They're way out of whack if they're not. They're not. And partially, it's got to be subsidized. You know, my feeling is on single-family stuff. I don't think somebody should be paying six hundred dollars to no. ask no. for a special permit or variance. So, but they're paying. You know. Anyway, when you as we look at it, she gave us some other information to maybe look at. Yeah, oh, between now and next month. So just sort of. So yeah, look through this months. and be prepared to talk about it. And next just month. some comments from FinCom from um, like Wayne was like it was explaining how an attorney comes in. Like I met with Mr. Janos and he set up an appointment to go through the application. So this way, this goes smoother and everything is complete. And although they don't have to, they could just file with the town clerk. He was saying, but you should get paid for that. But it's, but it's, but I'm, when my, when I'm saying to him, but it's during office hours. So, so we had come up 
we had talked a little bit about, oh. and this is something we can talk about later too, is yeah. when there's appointments required that she takes these appointments that are associated with the hearing and doesn't do them during her regular office hours. She can either stay later or come in on a different day and have an appointment day and that, that those hours can come out of revolving because then it's more straightforward. She's working on a hearing, comes out yeah. of revolving, and that's a way that we can help we can um, actually especially if we the can't amount increase of hours her. she's using for that particular purpose. Right, I and then agree. she can still do the office work during her office hours. Yep. So. Hmm. I'll hold my comments. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Until April. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense, but I am fundamentally opposed to using fees to pay for operating costs. I think that's a disgrace. I mean, and, and I tried to explain, it just, it just depends. Like, I met with Attorney that's Janos different. that's here for this hearing that we're going to start. Right. And But it's a public service. You know, you're and going I think the public should be entitled sure. to receive services during hours. And if we're not paying staff It is during. People, it's not her office hours. She has set office hours. It's still going to be re during regular business hours, but she's going to make special time. So it's not cutting into our office hours because of revolving uh, hours are related to no I, I understand yeah. but i think that that's a public disservice to tell the people who are the attorneys or whoever but you can only come on a yeah. thursday between yeah. 2 and 4 p.m because right. those are like i just but i can hold my comments <laughs> yeah, yeah. and be more formulated I'll be on in Tuesdays April. And Thursdays. Well, if you want to talk about your hearing you got to come yeah some other time i just by think that's only. absurd and i think it's obnoxious <laughs> and the town needs to pay for well you should have been here on that saturday next time <laughs> <laughs> we'd like you to come <laughs> <laughs> so you know what i had a no i understand so, but yeah, i'm not i'm not saying it's a bad thing you weren't here i'm saying yeah. next time we want you here yeah well i don't th i think they're going to do what they do so no but it would be great to have I'm, I'm saying this in all sincerity. It would have been great to have yeah. your voice there. And if I didn't have medical appointments, I would have been. <laughs> and maybe you can write an email and we can forward it along. Sure, I can do that. Yeah. If yeah. they're willing to hear it. Yeah. I, okay. I mean, I think it's important, Sharon. Okay. I do. Okay. I mean, do you agree? I think, Absolutely. I think and it's hard, you know, when you're sitting in front of them. I get, I, I, I'm fine talking to you guys on cable on it for this, but when I'm, you're sitting in front of all these people, you know, if I can get a quick explain what you do brief without violating yeah. yep. meeting law, <laughs> then I'll formulate something in writing. But the only time I went, I remember we had like ten minutes, and yeah. it wasn't they weren't there to listen to anything. So, but I couldn't have made it. And I'm that's not fine. saying that's yeah. a bad thing. We're volunteers, and we do the best um, we can. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, do you want to put off? So fees, um, rules of procedure, all this, all this, um, well, the building was back with cleaning. The fees, the rules of procedure, we did the reappointment letter. So um, Sharon's going to put in for reappointment, uh, go to a one-year term, and Sean Dean is going to take the five-year term. Okay. We're going to do a little switch. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. So we already we already did that. <laughs> <laughs> unless someone unless someone files an application to tomorrow, <laughs> go down with a bang. <laughs> I'd suggest that Patty maybe schedule a meeting business down in the other room for this stuff. Oh, yeah, unless, I mean, if we're gonna do unless, training, like if, if yeah. You know, yeah. if Jeff is gonna do training, I'm not gonna perform training. <laughs> well, what it, I was gonna ask, <laughs> I was gonna ask, what is training? What is this well, training that you speak of? We used to, hear, before <laughs> you guys were here, um, when a new board member came on board, we'd have a just a meeting to go over the bylaw and how things run and what you can and can't do and things like that at a, at a business meeting. And we just got away from <laughs> doing that. Okay. And who facilitates that? Well, the, the chairman will okay. do it, but okay. I don't know. I think <laughs> just found out about it. Okay. I think the person who who talks the most at the meetings That'd be you. would be good. <laughs> <laughs> no, Patty. Yeah, I mean, I'm fine going over the going over some of the stuff, but Wait, also Jeff, we can really? talk about the um, whatever courses are available. I think it's it's good. Some of those yeah. courses are good. We can kind yeah. of go through those. Yeah. Okay. And, and it's worth. I I don't know what I'd have to go through the schedule and see if there's any that are even. 
within a reasonable drive. They used to be over in Haverhill, and they're not anymore. So you go. Yeah. And I even called Elaine down at DHCD and said, you know, can they bring some back up on the North Shore? You know, they have one in Haverhill, but it's not, you know, they have one. And because I went to some of them, and we went to um, special permits, variances, mm -hmm. all at, at, at NECO. And, and now it's just like they just. I actually also have some good published material that yeah and I have I, copies. I gave you some stuff but I should from way back that's actually still stuff. very very relevant so I'll, I'm gonna pull I'll, I'll pull all this together and we okay. can talk about spend half an hour because we have like the vested work. rights and remember that <laughs> yeah I got a bunch of stuff actually I'll dig it all out okay. so that'll be at the April meeting okay mm-hmm and right Gina, now Gina will do a four-day off-site retreat of zoning. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. And if I have another room, we'll bring coffee. <laughs> Changes. Okay. Okay. So you want to make a note to change the room, probably? I think. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check the schedule and <clears throat> see if we have a second. You don't need to do that up here. No. Okay. Anything okay. else for business? So no. If you want to do a motion to close. A quick question. Then, could yep. could you bring a copy of the civil action against the ZBA? It 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 didn't get delivered. They keep trying to deliver it. Okay. So I just we want can't to talk say, about anything in litigation without posting an executive session. I think you can you ask can't get a, a copy. A, a oh no. I need a copy. Okay. Yeah. Just oh, a copy I of it. Wanted, okay. Nope. Don't okay. want to talk about it. Just want a copy of it. Okay. Cool. I had to go and pick it up. You have to sign for it. You have to sign. Never, I'm never around when they try to deliver it, and I'm okay. never around during the day. I was at the office. Just so you know, when if you did want to have a meeting and talk about right now, there's nothing to talk about. Yeah, but just a copy of it. We would it. have to post an executive session um, at least 48 hours before it would have to be part of the agenda. We usually do it before some board would do it after. But just throwing it out there. Cool. Okay, so motion to close the business meeting. So move. All the oops, second. Anyone? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Adjourn. Can we take a recess? Or five minute Kathy? recess. Yeah. Kathy, can you take a recess? Um
red light on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's right. There you go. Okay, uh, good evening. We are back to the zoning board, March 8th, and we'd like to open the hearing by reading the legal ad. Sure. An application has been made by Dallas and Audrey Gould of 169 Central Street, Georgetown, Mass., for a special permit under Mass. General Law, Chapter 40A, Section 9, and the Georgetown Zoning Bylaws, Chapter 165, Sections 2974-79. The owner applicants are requesting to convert a single-family dwelling to a multifamily parentheses two family dwelling premises affected is 169 central street georgetown mass in the re district and identified in the assessor's map 10a lot 7 application will be heard by the zoning board of appeals at the georgetown town hall third floor meeting room on march 8 2016 7 30 pm zba file 16-05 Thanks, Sharon. Uh, I'd just like to introduce all the members that we're all voting tonight. I had to count. <laughs> We've got a couple of associates that are stepping up tonight. So it's David Twist, Sean Dean, Sharon Freeman, Jeff Moore, that's Patty, and I'm Gina Tebow. And I'm um, Dallas Gould. This is Audrey Gould. Appreciate right, nice it. Nice to meet you. you. Yeah. How do you do? I'm Mark attorney Giannos. Mark I'm their attorney. Yeah. I'll be uh, making a presentation to the board tonight. Okay. And uh, Actually, you can go right into that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, good evening, uh, members of the board. My name is Mark Janos. I'm an attorney. I have an office in Newburyport, uh, and uh, we're here tonight for the purposes of seeking a special permit in order to convert uh, this structure from a single-family dwelling uh, to a two-family dwelling. Um, just a couple of, uh, I, I'm sure that you've all received a package of documents, and I probably want to uh, uh, touch on at least uh, some of them um, as I think they're pertinent to my presentation. Uh, the application I think speaks for itself. Um, there's a certified plot plan included in the package. Um, we've included a letter which uh, was received back in July and uh, should, uh, as an aside, uh, this process began last summer. Uh, we had some difficulty in obtaining all the appropriate information from an engineer took quite some time to put it all together based upon your requirements, uh, but we were finally able to uh, put it together. So what you'll see here on the board is reflective of uh, quite a bit of uh, back and forth to make sure that it was compliant with your rules and regulations. Uh, there's a letter contained uh, here from the uh, building inspector uh, dated July 20th. Um, the, uh, the Goulds had originally uh, gone before the um, uh, uh, building inspector requesting that uh, they be allowed to have a, a two-family dwelling house. It was uh, learned at that time that apparently in the past it had been used as a multifamily dwelling house. In fact, historically, this structure was owned by uh, the state hospital and had been used as a rooming house. And it was a place where doctors and nurses and so forth lived in various rooms. Uh, when I show you the floor plan, you'll see that uh, uh, the building is uh, extensive. It's about 7,100 square feet. It has quite a number of rooms in it, and I think it was used in that capacity. Uh, in any event, um, in spite of the fact that uh, certain tax information uh, determined that it had been used in the past as a uh, multifamily dwelling house, it was determined that because it had been used as a single family dwelling, that that multifamily dwelling use was no longer available, and it was necessary to come before the board and uh, request uh, a special permit in order to be allowed to do so. Um, we have a copy of the deed in here. We have some old plans, which I think were pertinent. I think you'll find that uh, the old plans are consistent with uh, the current uh, uh, layout of the, the plot plan of the, of the structure. In fact, uh, our petition does not include making any structural or in increasing the size of the footprint of the property. Uh, there will be no uh, external changes of any kind requested. And I think that the uh, plans that I provided in your package uh, will uh, show that what we have is what was contained in the previous plans. Uh, my letter of uh, representation, tax information, which is included in the package. Um, importantly, uh, we have uh, information from the uh, Board of Health uh, indicating that the uh, system is uh, capable of sustaining uh, up to nine bedrooms. It's a fairly extensive system. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, the proposal this evening for a second dwelling unit uh, will request only two bedrooms, and the balance of the bedrooms, if there are any, would be 
uh, used by uh, the ghouls. Uh, if they, but it's just the two of them. They currently don't have any children or other members of family living with them. So you'll find that uh, uh, it was uh, reviewed, and, and that's what the determination was. The system is compliant currently with the uh, Board of Health requirements. Um, we have a letter from the Conservation Commission indicating that uh, uh, I think it's also a, a component of the Board of Health information which was provided in your package. Um, we have a uh, building permit application which was the basis for the denial by the uh, building inspector. It's also in your package. Uh, near the end of your package you'll find there's a uh, uh, information from the assessor's office regarding uh, abutters uh, uh, who are uh, statutory abutters uh, and um, I think I've included in here a uh, the plan um, from the assessor's map indicating uh, who these abutters are and in, in, in particular those abutters who have uh, provided us with um, a uh, letter of endorsement uh, regarding the uh, our petition uh, I think you'll find that uh, no one is in the audience this evening that I think is opposed to our request all the neighbors have been uh, spoken to and consulted with and they've all uh, agreed and endorsed the plan that we're presenting tonight we have additional assessors information and finally we have uh, a series of pictures which I think you'll find uh, helpful in your determination uh, the structure is, uh, is, uh, has some age to it. It's uh, quite beautiful, frankly, and uh, I think it's uh, significantly large enough to be able to accommodate a second uh, structure. I also have my uh, physician letter, which uh, I'll speak to in a moment. Uh, as you can see, Central Street, we have the Bituminous uh, uh, driveway. Um, this uh, driveway uh, cars uh, have the capacity of being able to park. There's a garage, uh, which uh, currently uh, can house uh, four. four motor vehicles within the garage itself. Plus, there's an <coughs> extensive area outside the right in this area where uh, automobiles can park uh, outside, uh, which is more than sufficient for uh, what the proposal is this evening. Again, I'm hoping that you all have uh, received copies of all of these plans that you have. Uh, the, as you can see uh, here, we have this is the uh, first, second, and third floor plans. Uh, in the bold, you can see where the second unit is uh, being proposed, which would be in this area here, as well as in this area here. Uh, we have adequate ingress and egress uh, from the exterior to the interior. And there's also additional uh, doors between the units themselves. So in the event of any kind of an issue, a safety issue and so forth, uh, there'd be more than appropriate um, ingress and egress from not only the existing unit, but uh, the proposed unit as well. If, by the way, if I'm making my presentation, please stop me if you, you have questions. I'm, I'm, I'm not so great at plans. On, on this view, can you explain to me which is, this is the... That's an aerial view. Aerial I, view, I which don't. part is the two units? Essentially the, the right side. Right so side. in between the main house and the garage this, would be where the second unit would be? Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's correct. So one and two. That's right. Okay. That's right. And so each one of the Good units question. has its own ingress and egress. In fact, uh, uh, several. And you can see here where it says uh, uh, there's a shared entrance way here, there's an entrance, a, an exclusive entrance to the second unit here. And I think that's contained in that mm -hmm. part of the building, which is sort of between the garage and, and the main house. And when it was three units, do you happen to know where that third unit was? Don't really know. Don't really know. No. Okay. Um, the, as you can see from the plan, the, um, you know, there's this. There's a, an enormous number of rooms. Yeah. So where people used to stay yeah. um, once upon a time yeah. is anybody's guess. I think that yeah. it really wasn't determined at the time. Um, well, the prior owners rented it as three, right? I thought I saw that letter. Maybe I made that up. Christensen was a letter. I mean, yeah, I think it's said letter. three. I was just curious. It, it, it may not have bearing today. John has done a lot of research on that and, and because when it was up for sale people were coming to 
Right. And he went and got accessories. Right. So it was being taxed to three family. Yeah, I saw that. Three family. I was just wondering where the third unit was. That's all. Do, I don't know. Do you, do you folks know where the third unit um, may have been? I'm thinking it might have been on the third, third floor. Third floor. Okay. Yeah. Is there egress to the? Yeah, there is. as a fire floor. escape actually. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is it in the back of the building, the fire escape? It's, you can actually see it in the, in the plans if you uh, on the on the side profile. If you go if you go to the um, I'll go to the uh, the elevation plan. Yes. Um, go to the last elevation plan. Elevation. Second to last. PR one. Yeah, you'll see it on the very top oh. diagram. Oh, there we go. Yeah. It must have been uh, that. Must have been the third floor. In the oh, I get it. Okay. That's a Thank fire you. escape. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Oh, it shows it right there. There you go. <laughs> uh, the uh, the unit is uh, uh, will contain approximately uh, 1,984 square feet, which is uh, fairly substantial. The main residence uh, will uh, uh, have uh, 5,830 square feet, so that's a fairly substantial uh, building. The building is 70 it's 7,100 square feet in total uh, uh, floor area, so. These are your, uh, these are your exterior uh, uh, views of uh, the profile, uh, including the apple mentioned fire escape. Uh, front view includes unit, we've <coughs> identified uh, unit uh, entrance uh, to unit two. The garage is here. Each garage is front to back so that the cars would be able to, uh, to park, not side by side, but Oh no, the side by side. They'll be able to, to park side by side. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh. Here's a shared entrance here. There's a main entrance for uh, uh, the main house, the primary residence. This is there. And uh, you can see we have uh, elevations here as well, which is one of your requirements, showing uh, the, the height of the building. Again, no exterior uh, changes are uh, at this time. Um, I think it would be a shame to do it anyways because I think it has, you know, such historic significance in terms of what it was built and, and how beautiful it looks. I think the, the colored pictures are really, you know, show uh, you know, a beautiful building. So uh, the intention here is not to really denigrate the character of it. In fact, I think it's consistent with when it was built, what it was used for, which is, uh, you know, numbers of individuals uh, occupying various rooms over the course of time. Huh. Anybody have any questions? At this point? I think you just answered mine. I was having a hard time with the plans to try and determine if any exterior walls were changing or not. It didn't look like there was. So no, they're not. I'm looking at no. The there's nothing exterior or interior, as far okay. as we know. It's just so, rent, the internal yeah, so renovation. What, what exists is the way that they're going to be able to uh, mm -hmm. distinguish one unit from the other unit. So, okay. so just for my own edification, with respect to the egress uh, internally. It's like a, it's a, it's a yeah, it's a common yeah. area hallway. Okay, yeah. so both doors come out to a common area. Common area. Yes. Okay. Like a mudroom or something like that, like uh, a breezeway. Yeah, you can look as a mudroom. Yeah. yeah. And that's that shared entrance door. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And why why are you choosing two units and not three? I think it was, um, you know, they. Uh, at one point, they had thought the possibility of making it three, but the then. Goals. Yeah, the, the Goulds. Yeah. After they had learned that it couldn't, you know, that, that they needed uh, some uh, approval in order to um, expand upon it being a single family residence. But I think the layout here is just more conducive to a two unit dwelling house. Not yeah. to mention the fact that I think, from, you know, from a special permit standpoint, I think without, you know, overburdening the current structure and uh, the uses that are consistent with that particular neighborhood, you know, going from one to three. It's a little bit more difficult than going from one to two. I guess I have a slightly different opinion based on then some prior experience. What? You know, with the family, it would it need, need to. So my recollection in the lot, am I allowed to talk about prior things that we've talked about? In a prior case, mm -hmm. three units is not a. We were told, family. I thought, that there was no thing in our bylaw that said whether it, multifamily and a two family, there was no, no explicit difference. That's my recollection from a prior case. No, um, at least it's that's what three, was. three family, 
Well, a three family would we trigger We were told a multi family. Three family could be two or more. It's, it's like it wasn't explicit. We didn't in Georgetown have a difference between a two family and a three family. That was my understanding on the last case. And maybe I was mistaken. That would be unfortunate yeah. because. I but the thing is, to make a three family, they would have to. It used water. to be a three family though. Yeah, but th these are all bedrooms now. There's no kitchen. There's there's a bathroom, so, but there's no kitchen. Mm -hmm. Let me just read definitions. Okay. That, yep. that may help. What page? Um, sixteen. Yep. Better. I don't think so. That's under, not what they're applying for. Under so dwelling. Know. Well, that, I'm I'm just asking. I think. Yeah. Under I think. under dwelling. So multifamily. A building used designed as a residence for two or three families yeah. living independently yeah. of each other, doing their own cooking therein but which may have joint services and facilities or both. So I guess what's your question? I'm sorry. My, well, I guess um, in thinking of prior cases, which I think we should be consistent, mm -hmm. I think it would only be fair to be open and forthright that if they presumed that two family was all they could do and that's not the case then we need to be transparent and let them know and if they choose to still go two family that's fine and if they choose for three because we don't in Georgetown have a specific that you must do X for two and Y for three in which we didn't make anyone else do then I think it's up to them and then they can they would probably have to go back to their butters and say are you okay if it's a three if they so want to do so but I don't think it's fair of us to sort of proceed as though they don't have a, third, a different option if that was what they initially hoped for and were led to believe that they couldn't. That's all. Okay. I don't know that. I, I think, think the decision. For I think the decision to proceed with the two family was based on a number of different factors, including among other things, the I, the the sensitivity to expanded from one to three, which I think is a, a bigger jump. Which I can tell you in a prior case was an issue, and it's much, this structure is set up to me to be much, that's not as big of a jump as what we did prior, and I think it would be disingenuous of me to suggest that you're only limited to two, and if you still want to go for two, that's fine. But I, I think this, um, I think that if, you know, based on the discussion tonight and hopefully the board looking favorably upon the petition, if the Goulds decide you know, that, that the physical layout of, of the building is conducive to adding an additional uh, unit, then, you know, they can proceed to come back before the board and ask for yet another unit at this point. That's not what we're here for this evening, but um, that's certainly good for them to know if they can if they can make it work and obviously a lot of it is not just having a big structure and a whole lot of rooms but having rooms that are conducive to having you know uh, functional living space yeah living spaces that have their own integrity have their own you know <laughs> ingress and egress those kinds of things and the structure that size with I've, I've been on it in a historic tour it is clearly capable of doing that in my personal opinion so I, I'm just I guess I just feel like we should lay it out that it might be an option if you wanted to reconsider if you want to proceed with two I'm perfectly fine with your application you just to the, the and this is only my opinion not the board's opinion go for three. I mean no, no I think if, we'll just con continue and then with the okay. the way you said, yeah. just if you did a three family is a different set of rules mm -hmm. it would trigger site plan approval for the planning board okay. and it would require a water resource permit to the zoning board well, I think um, they've they've spoken to me, and they, they their um, belief is that we should proceed on the petition that we filed tonight. I think if they learn after mm -hmm. tonight that they have an opportunity to be able to come back before the board and whatever other requirements, including site plan review with the planning board, or with right? The, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Then they make that decision. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. Um, any other questions uh, before I? Um, Proceed. I wanted to just double check on on parking. You got you can fit four cars inside. How many in the driveway? Oh, yeah, yeah, probably ten. <laughs> yeah, I know it's big. I just, for the record, I mean, it's if you know, they needed to do that. I mean, obviously, we're you, talking you about you could actually you know, park ten there. Yeah, so you're yeah. looking at two family and in the number of bedrooms per unit. I was kind of 
So there's a lot in the main residence. In general, you're gonna end up with two units with how many bedrooms each? <laughs> Probably quite a few actually. Well, uh, two for the uh, second unit okay. and uh, seven. Seven, seven yeah. for the other seven. unit. Yeah. And you guys are gonna be residing in the? Seven, mm -hmm. yeah. The seven, okay. And I'm sorry, I know you said this and I've been looking for it and I can't, Board of Health, how many? What's the, um, the the Board of Health indicated that uh, the system was capable of sustaining uh, nine okay units, uh, nine bedrooms. Okay, and that's and that's, in the, that's in your package. Thank you. I know you said it. I just couldn't put my fingers and on it. The garage. Oh, no. Nope. With respect to this photo, mm -hmm. you pull in and then walk out, is. or is there a way to your unit from the garage? You have to walk out. There's there's it's uh, encapsulated, so you'd have to um, walk out. For both units, neither. That's correct. Okay. I mean, there's no intent on changing that internal doorway to the unit. No, not at this. Not at this time. Um, special permit on your uh, ordinance. Uh, Particularly, uh, the sections uh, 9 and 7D4 through 79 uh, provide for a special permit. Use may be granted by your board, um, provided that you meet the requisite uh, requirements. Uh, and I can list as, uh, generally speaking, there are, there's a list of about eight or nine that uh, I'd like to uh, touch on uh, briefly. Uh, the use is listed in the table of uses, which it is. Uh, the request is uh, certainly desirable and uh, we believe essential uh, to the public convenience, uh, providing additional housing for, uh, for the community. Um, the, given what we proposed, uh, we don't believe that uh, this uh, proposal will create any undue traffic congestion. Adequate <coughs> parking, Central Street is a fairly uh, well-traveled street. Uh, the sight lines are, are fairly good, so I think that people uh, exiting from the property itself onto Central Street. There won't be any issues regarding uh, that. Um, it will not overload any public water uh, or drainage systems or sewer systems that we're aware of. Uh, of course, it is uh, serviced by a septic system, so that's all internal on the property itself. And we don't believe that uh, it will unduly uh, subject uh, uh, the neighborhood or this property to any uh, hazards affecting health, safety, and the public welfare. Uh, I don't believe that there are special rules and regulations with respect to this petition, um, but we do believe that uh, it will not impair the integrity of the character of the neighborhood. Um, in fact, one of the, I think, the sensitive issues that you know, we've, we've seen here is that because of the, this structure, because of its age and its historic integrity, uh, we, we believe that uh, by uh, the petition that we filed tonight, it will not interfere with that integrity, and we think that that's an important component uh, to uh, our petition this evening. Uh, the request will not, by its addition to the neighborhood, cause any excess of that particular use that could be detrimental to the character of the neighborhood. As I've uh, pointed out uh, previously, all the neighbors who abut this property uh, have uh, uh, provided us in the board with uh, letters of approval, and uh, uh, we would ask you to take that into consideration. Uh, we don't believe there'll be any uh, um, emission of any dangerous and noxious fumes or chemicals or things like that, and I'm just quoting the statute, frankly. Uh, but uh, um, in support of this particular petition, uh, uh, the property is, uh, has been used as a residence and will continue to be used as a residence uh, uh, where uh, we would add, uh, we would request uh, the addition of this second uh, uh, residence. Um, and. Uh, we believe that uh, there's a provision in your use tables uh, allowing for a conversion, which I think is this is the applicable uh, use table. Uh, uh, I think it's under the use regulation schedule of conversion. So uh, it's uh, contained within your uh, within your bylaw. Um, we believe that uh, you know as uh, properties become. Uh, built out or communities become built out, we think that uh, adding additional housing stock is certainly uh, appropriate and uh, favorable uh, without denigrating the character of the neighborhood. Uh, we don't believe, and we've spoken about the, the traffic issue, which I don't believe uh, will be affected. Uh, we believe that uh, this addition is uh, 
minimal in terms of uh, its uh, uh, addition to the uh, neighborhood. Um, we believe that one uh, residential uh, unit will have little or no impact on municipal systems, uh, nor will the addition uh, of that unit unduly subject uh, such services to any uh, untoward uh, health, safety, or general welfare issues. And as I said before, the existing uh, septic system is more than adequate to accommodate not only what we propose, but many, many more. Um, the, um, we don't believe that there are any special uh, regulations with respect to this, although we would certainly, uh, if the board were inclined to impose conditions, uh, we would be uh, willing to uh, consider them, of course. Um, the uh, residential nature of that particular zoning district will not be impaired, we believe, uh, by the addition of one additional unit. Uh, and there is uh, uh, not an excess of these kinds of uses in that particular zoning district that we believe will you know, create a new kind of uh, environment within uh, the IRA uh, zone. Um, me, thank you. Uh, as I indicated, uh, this uh, lot is, is 45,000 square feet, so it's uh, well over, it's not well over, but a little over an acre. Uh, the, uh, the building footprint is approximately 7,100 square feet, so dimensionally, this structure complies with all of your dimensional requirements. And because we're not making any changes to the exterior footprint of the property, we're not requesting any uh, zoning relief uh, either by way of variance or otherwise. Uh, so. so there's no non no existing nonconformities on the existing one. Not on not on this structure. Yeah. No, it okay. complies in every regard with respect to uh, side yard setbacks, uh, frontage requirements. It's more than adequate across the board. I mean, the, the lot is gigantic and the building is equally gigantic, but um, <laughs> it it was uh, uh, strategically placed right in the middle of the lot, so it's. Uh, you know, it really has all of the, um, and it still has this, this regal setting, uh, which is not something that we uh, believe would be interfered with by requesting an additional unit. Um, could, I, could I interrupt you for just a second? And, certainly. Uh, do you mind just taking a second to talk about what, what you are, what your plans are for the renovation inside? So what, what are you doing? You're probably adding a kitchen or? No, we're not doing anything. Every, every, it's a, it's it's, it's all, it's all done. Okay, so you, I, I saw a building permit in there. You mentioned a building well, we permit. Well, we have. So I, I think was it was suggested what changes were planned to be made. That's it was suggested that a building permit was necessary in order to proceed to the next level, requesting a, um, and I believe that. Oh, for the denial. This community, for the denial, for the for the denial, denial you need okay, to file a building permit. So you're not permit planning on actually doing any work. In, okay. in new report where I practice, you can simply ask the building inspector. Assuming for the sake of discussion that you would be denied, you would simply request that he issue you a denial as opposed to filing a building permit. Got it. And so in this particular case, it, you know. They had to file a permit like to get form denied. over substance, you file a <laughs> permit, and they deny it, and then you take it to the next level. Okay. Uh, so the, 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 kitchen, the kitchen facilities exist for both units. It's, there's no yes. real work to be done. Yeah, no there's work. no work to be okay. done. Okay, excellent. This All is right. essentially move-in condition at this point. You can see from the pictures that the, that the and interior And it was that is, way when you bought it? Yes. 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 Yeah, I mean, and it's, so it's, it's beautiful. It's probably yeah, it, it, it does. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Uh, unit, so I so I can kind of place where we're at. This is the first floor, front door of the rental unit. Uh, or that's the first well, floor. Well, that's the kitchen of the first floor. Right. Yeah. There's so a the patio uh, next to the. Um, okay. With it. What is on the left here? That's a pool. Okay. Yes, I couldn't pool, see from there. Yeah. Okay. So, and the pictures are all of, of the rental. Yeah. As, as it exists. Yep. Okay. All right. You will still need to get just so they know um, sign offs if you haven't already on that building permit that was filed. We have a new building inspector, so um, he may have you get more signatures. I don't know. I don't know. You just need when when we get the decision, whatever it may be, um, for a certificate so of occupancy. Yeah, just I don't know. Maybe. Just I would just see him. Oh, on had, the back of the building permit. We yeah. had yeah, because um, yeah, we just had a, a recent multifamily where he had started the building permit, but then um, it was a lot different than this. So we, we conditions. Yeah. yeah. So are you suggesting just that check with the building with inspector it, after. assuming that the board would be favorable to our petition that we would take that 
favorable ruling back to the building inspector who would then uh, issue a permit and then do an inspection and confirm with however he chooses, however he chooses yeah. that it is Gina's is right it may be an occupancy I think it's an occupancy a, permit issue an occupancy permit but he's so got to get the sign off yeah because right now instead of the process. you know everybody believed it was a three family dwelling house once upon a time and no right. one really took the effort to yeah. you know walk through the appropriate channels to get that determination and, and he may or may not walk through I think but I think technically you need a certificate of occupancy mm -hmm. in order for anybody to reside in there right. and we don't issue those so right. you will have to go back to the building and that makes sense mm -hmm. um, inspector just to at the very least do that maybe he's going to require everyone to walk through and check that makes sense. everything's up to code i don't and know and if he sees the if he sees if you approve if he sees the approval and you know he sees all the the supporting documentation to substantiate that approval then he'll say okay here's the other i don't know how they identify one unit from the other uh from the building permit standpoint but that's up to the building inspector, I imagine. So yeah. if, say if this was granted tonight and we did the decision, then he would get that copy, um, but you wouldn't get a building permit. You know, you'd have the 20 days to actually get a certificate of work. Of course. So he decides. Right. The lot is favorable. Um, with respect to the lot, is there going to be some defined areas of which belong to each unit? Um, I mean, with the the fencing, fencing maybe or? being shared, I think is kind of yeah. what we're looking at it. Okay. Shared. I think the pool is probably going to be off limits, though. That's a good the fenced in. Yeah, it's fenced in. That would be just ours. But the yard mm -hmm. itself will be open too. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just didn't know if there was going to need to be fencing put up or. Oh no. Uh, anything of that sort. No, I think that the the rest of the area, well, the deck belongs to you folks, right? The deck out back here. Um, it's actually shared. It's, it's a shared deck. deck here, yeah. Okay. And the pool is, is ours. fenced ours. and belongs to you. Mm -hmm. And this deck here is your deck, yes. correct? Mm -hmm. so. So can I ask a, I, I have a question, I think it's more for us. There, there's a handwritten note on this that I don't understand what it means. Asterisk. What assessor yeah, sees see not permitted. The assessor just goes out and looks at it oh. and and what he visually sees, but it doesn't necessarily mean he comes back and checks to make sure it's permitted that way. I, I still don't understand what the assessor sees. So when an assessor permitted. goes in to assess the house, yeah, he walks in and what sure. he sees is that it's a three family. He doesn't know whether there's a permit associated with it or not. So he assesses the taxes based on what he sees, not what's permitted in the file. Where, was, where is that, by the way? It's handwritten on the... On your vision appraisal front page? I guess so. That might just be our copy from Jay. It might be. I don't yeah. have a, I yeah. don't have any. So basically, it's, it's an assessor when went John to was checking it out. large house and just made a visual. <laughs> this doesn't appear to be that's, anything other than a single family. That's what he does when he goes. Okay. But it's written that. right here that it's three things. Right, because that's what he saw when he went in to appraise the house. Doesn't necessarily well, mean that. No. So I don't. I guess I don't understand why this is tonight in the first place. Yeah. Because it's clearly a three-family. Yeah. Well, I, like, I don't get. There's no permit. Yeah. That's just something family. I wrote on there when I was talking to Jay. There's no permit for a three-family, and yet it's here. It's because of what he sees. It's not. It's the not black and white. And when they go out and they look at something. But if it's on the car. Yeah, but the assessor doesn't. He's not the permit guy. Right. He's an assessor. He deals with the taxes. He doesn't the, know anything about the permits. The assessor isn't even. It's a third party company that's hired by the town. So they go out. Right. They don't know mm -hmm. what's been filed with the town, if there's a pr approved permit or an approved zoning board or so anything. So what John is saying, he never had a permit on file for this to be a three family? Correct. Correct. Even though it was historically a three family, maybe because we didn't collect records or maybe we forgot to hire the building inspector. Or, or because someone said, went to the assessor and said, I have a three Previous family. Or it's been used historically as a three family. Yeah. I've run into the situation in the past, in Newburyport in particular, where you know they've taken houses and they've created on a, like a, a top story. They've created yep. a, and so um, they go to the assessor's office and they mm -hmm. say, we have another unit. So the assessor would write a little note into the assessor's card saying, you know, second unit. Oh, by the way. And, <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're without, correcting the record. I, exactly. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. I, I think, it, as you noted earlier, the building inspector could not make a determination that this was a pre-existing right. 
non-conforming use right. because at some point in time it seems like maybe this was in fact used as a as a single family. In fact, this letter is way, very right. This letter from the building inspector I think is really indicative of what he found. Right. Um, and I think I think it really does speak to that issue. Okay. Was it the, the previous owner? How long have you owned the house? Um, less than two years. Okay. So did the previous owners? Use it as a single family. Um, two family. Two. Yeah, two family. So I don't know. He, he indicates on that letter. I think I, I got to dig it out. Does doesn't he say it was used as a single family at some point? Permanent history know. shows a major oh major district prior to 1966. Oh, what does he go? Uh, existing structure was converted to a three family prior to your recent purchase, and I think he's addressing that statement to the Goulds. The review of our records show the assessors began assessing the structure as a three family in 1996. Probably because someone went in there and says we're using it as a three family, so the assessors. Uh, records were altered to reflect what someone said versus what, what was permitted. What was okay. permitted. Okay. I so when it. you bought, but there's the not enough information to confirm it's a pre-existing non use. I guess so. It was your point. History, and that's not in history is not, in history right. is right. not right. sufficient. Now I understand. And historically, that's not sufficient to, you right. know, to give it that, you know, that three-family status. When you bought the house. Was there a third kitchen in the house? Um, it was. Uh, there was a. Um, like a fridge upstairs on the third floor. Um, I mean, it wasn't. It's not really like no a full. Stove or. Um, there was a. Stove. I think there was a stove there at one point. It was, it but was they a, took it. Yeah. yeah. But it was not but there it, when you moved in. It was removed. Right. You could mm -hmm. see where where it was. But mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And then and now, did you renovate that so it's all bedrooms for your residents? Um, right now the third floor is just storage. Okay. We just plan on keeping it storage, really. Is it separate utilities? Uh, yes, it is. Mm -hmm. The third floor is. Oh. Um, third floor is its own furnace, yeah. Huh. Yeah. Which we ne we've never really used, but. So unit. somebody Actually probably did own. this yeah. like a long time ago and yeah. didn't get a permit. This is a rooming house, and so yeah. my guess is that it used, rather than have, yep. um, you know, specific uh, spatial residences you probably had just all bedrooms and somebody then living here and someone sleeping here someone sleeping here occasionally going to the kitchen and getting something to eat yeah, that's going exactly into the study what it was. and so it was a, you know more of a traditional rooming house that's as what opposed the historical to society yeah, yeah. breakfast mm. <laughs> <laughs> i think that's where the doctors and the nurses yep. used to live that's so correct. everybody had their own bedroom yep. it just like you know, a big city. Yep. You know, common bathrooms. Yep. You know, knock on the door. You know, those kinds <laughs> of things. So. The good old days. <laughs> okay. Do you want to read the exhibit? Yeah. Um, I just, just have to read the exhibits into record yeah. formally. Uh, exhibit A is sheet marked EC1, a certified plot plan, existing conditions, dated 9-7-15 by professional land by Professional Land Surveying of Groveland, Mass, st stamped by Brian G. Parmenter. Exhibit B, sheet marked EC-2, first, second, and third floor plans by the same. Exhibit C, sheet marked PR1, elevation drawings left front, elevations by the same. Exhibit D, sheet marked PR-2, elevation of right side in real elevation by the same. Exhibit E, sheet marked EC-3, first, second, and third floor plans by the same. And finally, Exhibit F, septic system as built by Morin Cameron Group, Inc., drawn by Scott P. Cameron, civil engineer, dated 4 to 14. Do you want those back, Kyle? Okay. Um, we have nobody in the audience. Any questions from the board? No, 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 I have some comments when you get to it. Though. Okay. Um, you've kind of summarized everything. Is there anything else you wanted to say? Anyone? No? Okay. I did have one, um, just a just a, a curious question. I, your uh, section 165.94, uh, entitled uh, Pre-existing Non-Conforming Uses, says, uh, pre-existing non-conforming structures or uses may be extended or altered provided that no such extension or alteration shall be permitted unless there is a finding by the Board of Appeals in granting a special permit that such change, extension, or alteration shall not be substantially more detrimental than the existing non-conforming 
use of the neighborhood, period. The next sentence says, a special permit shall not be required when alteration, reconstruction, extension, or structural change to a single or two-family residential structure does not increase the non-conforming nature of said structure. I find those two statements to be inconsistent. The building mm -hmm. inspectors are the same thing. <laughs> Yeah, they've been in there. For yeah, a while. so the second I, one it has was almost to do like when you read the use. second line, it said, "Well, we don't really need a special permit because it already contemplates that well, if one, it's not going to be more than first, two. The first sentence, the first sentence requires it for uses. Second sentence re refers to structures only. Only to structures, I believe. Well, right. again, you know, I read it and I said, <laughs> "Well, these seem to be <laughs> somewhat inconsistent." But in, in any event, yeah, I agree. Know, Mm -hmm. We took the path of least resistance, and we decided to file for a special permit. <laughs> okay. um, so we can go yeah, into it's a, it board. has to do with Oops. the use, I think. Yeah. Yeah. This is a use. Not. Okay. Board discussion. Well, I'll jump in because I said I had a comment. So yeah. I, uh, you know, in, in this case, this is obviously well, it's not obvious, but in my opinion, this is a perfect application for or two family, not just because it's been used that way obviously in the past as multifamily but I mean there's a few iconic homes in town that I think are very important to, to maintain and you know this is one of them um, and it's important for an owner to be able to have some financial resources for the long term to be able to maintain a structure like this it's they're not inexpensive and unless you've got one enormous family that not too many people have I mean this is a great application and to have two families and there's plenty of parking plenty of off-street parking there's plenty of garage space all the stuff that's been talked about and uh, it's a it's a good solution to maintain a, a very attractive house for the long term we've had other hearings in the past where some other homes in town were contemplated to be demolished or substantially renovated or or you know altered in some way and I've, I've have some heartache with that. This is a, a good example of how to how to maintain something mm -hmm. that's that's really good in town. So I'm uh, I'm in favor of the of the application. So I'll throw that out there, and I'm willing to make a motion on it. But maybe you guys have some other comments as well. So. Um, the one thing I would like to say is thank you for coming before the board and actually getting a legal permit to proceed. It's obvious that the person before you was had this as a, a rental apartment unless there was family I, i'm not sure but either way they needed to come before us and they didn't so thank you for for doing that i appreciate that thank you speaking for the town mm -hmm. um doesn't always happen that way too. no it no. doesn't always happen that way no <laughs> and so it's nice that you're honest and for forthright thank you. thank you anybody else um i i would agree with jeff i think given the location and I mean, I've always, you know, having only lived here for four or five years, you drive by and wonder what the history is of the house and what the use is, and you know, I think the application fits in this in this particular instance. So, I too, you know, would agree that this is appropriate. You might want to check with the Historical Society because I think they have information on how that house had been used and stuff if you're interested in that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. I think there might be something in the books. building file that John looked into because yeah. he went into yeah. this <laughs> a month yeah. with the it's assessor. pretty amazing house. Mm -hmm. I know. I'm actually. Yeah, it's. I'd like a tour. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually on the historic house tour years back. Hmm. It's, it's quite they funny. might even have some like cool old pictures that yeah. you can make copies of. Yeah. You yeah. know that you might want to have like hung somewhere. Um, anyway. If you ever wanted to run a bed and breakfast, that might be something else. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm yeah. sure you'd love to do that. And it would be another good application. For that use, yeah. Actually, yeah. actually no, it, would be, it would be a perfect we, we, use for that. That was a relatively new uh, addition to our bylaw. That there's only a couple places in town where it might fit, and this was probably one of them that yeah. the planner had in mind at the time. But anyway, that, so be it. Do we need to <laughs> make a motion at this point? Or? <laughs> yes. All right. I would move that uh, for the application for 169 Central Street that the board find that the requested use, uh, as required by the Georgetown Zoning Bylaw, Chapter 165, Section 79, is essential or desirable but to the public convenience or welfare, will not overload any public water or other municipal systems so as to unduly subject any area 
the hazards affecting health, safety, or the general welfare and will not impair the integrity or character of the district or adjoining districts and will not cause an excess of that particular use which could be detrimental to the character of the neighborhood. And I move that the board grant to Dallas and Audrey Gould of 169 Central Street in the RRA district and identified on assessor's map 10A, Lot 7, Georgetown, Mass, a special permit under Mass General Law, Chapter 40A, Section 9, and the Georgetown Zoning Bylaws, Chapter 165, Sections 2, 9, 74 through 79, a request to convert a single family dwelling to a multi family two unit dwelling. Second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous motion carries. Thank you, Thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. That's Thank great. you. Thank you for your time. We read the last Appreciate it. it. So, oh, oh yeah, I've got to read. Um, yep. 14 days. Uh, there's a 20 day appeal period. 14 days, the clerk has to file a written decision with the town clerk. A uh, person exercises, a person who exercises rights under an appealed permit, special variance, does so at your own risk. And so. um, motion to close the hearing. We do you typically post your uh, decision. We have 14 days to, to write the decision, get it signed, mm -hmm. and stamped by the town clerk. And in that case, I could even, I could give you a call and you know that it's you know, I have them. Um, and registry yeah. instructions, you get to go to the town clerk, she'll certify that there was no appeal filed. And then you can go to the registry, and then you bring back a copy for the building inspection and a copy for us. Can you send me a copy when you post it so that we know what the date is that we can come back and get the... Uh, oh, yeah, I'll put the right, right on the registry instructions. I'll That's put the 20-day date. Okay. Good. Um, so Since you're not doing any construction, there's not... Yeah. Yeah. No. So you got somebody eager to move in, I suppose. Well, <laughs> that's a possibility, of course. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, we don't want to, as you know, sometimes people file appeals a day late or mm -hmm. whatever, but we don't anticipate that. You know, everybody's really been supportive of the Gould, so... We think that that will continue on. So well, it's a nice place. So good luck. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck. Thank, thank you. Yeah, thank you very thank you. All right. This hearing. Someone. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.